Yes, we're back. Again. Wait a second, that's not KSP. Hello everybody and welcome. Yes, I am back here in Kerbal Space Program. Not Kerbal Space Program 2, as you have seen on my channel for a couple of weeks ago, that that project has now been well put on ice, to put it mildly. Basically, the entire development team has been sacked from what we have learned. Well, so what am I going to do since there are no more any news about KSP2 and, and the progress on that? So I decided, well, let's experiment a little bit as I alluded to in a previous video. What I'm going to try to do now is make a little bit of a comparison of how easy it is to build a plane in Kerbal Space Program, the original, and how easy it is to do that in Juno New Origins, the other game that you have seen in the intro. If this is something you might be interested in as sort of a small series where I take different aspects of these games and compare them to each other and see, hey, this is how you do it in KSP, this is how you do it in Juno, leave me a comment down below and also subscribe to this channel unless you have already done so. All right, what you can see here is basically my, my old faithful of airplanes. I really love building this type of uh, Typhoon Eurofighter style jet with the canopy on top and the dual engines. And yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of special words for all of these wing types and how things are going on that I don't know because I have no idea about aeronautics at all. So if you want to have some really, really good information about flying and airplanes, etc., Scott Manley is your guy. I am not. I'm just building things and having fun with it. All right, we're almost done here. This is really just getting my bearings back in KSP, because a lot of it is different than KSP too, but yeah, things were working fine. And as you can see here, we're launching this thing already we have our panther engines with the afterburners We've got a few visual nods running here but not the latest like the uh, newest volumetric cloud update by black rack and also not the newest deferred lighting etc this is something for a future video flying works as usual as you can see here this thing is also quite maneuverable everything is working nicely and yeah it's the same as the past couple of years since Kerbal Space Program is a known quantity and also... Yeah, crashing is also a known quantity. <laughs> again! Alright, let's do this again, but let's do it in Juno. So, as you can already see, the editor in Juno is a little bit more... Well, streamed down, streamlined, basic, uh, not as... I don't know, populated with Kerbals running around in the background. It feels a lot more sterile than in KSP. But then again, you can do a lot more in regards to tweaking things. Uh, I've put here a cockpit command module and now I'm trying to get a tank attached to it because I don't see any attachment nodes on the cockpit. So I kind of want to slap this thing on here as best as I can. And yeah, it seems like we succeeded. So I don't know how to go about like this cockpit looks like it has some some cutouts below the glass canopy that should be put into something. But then again, when I put the tank right flush below the canopy, then the tank curvature reaches inside where the pilot should sit. So yeah, not really sure that's the correct way of doing things, but this is how I'm building the plane. I have watched no tutorials or anything how to do this. This is just me trying to figure things out with my limited experience in Juno and my vast experience in Kerbal Space Program trying to fit things together. What you just saw is adding a nose cone to a procedural tank that had its uh, diameter reduced compared to the standard thing. And it beautifully um, modified itself to, to uh, fit to that diameter. What's also different from KSP is that you, uh, in order to copy parts, you don't press, uh, you don't hold down the Alt key and press left mouse button. 
you have to drag the part you want to copy with the right mouse button. That's something you have to find out or, well, now you found out because I told you. Interesting here, the angles for the rotation can be set by the gizmo on the top left where you can see angle step. And here you can reduce it to, well, maybe even lower than one, I don't know, but <laughs> one was enough. And then you can really do fine increments over here. Me, I kind of prefer the way that you hold down the shift key for, for fine adjustments in case, but even maybe you can do that in judo as well. If that is the case, please let me know in the comments. I am really a novice here. <laughs> so how to go about building that dual barrel uh, body down below? You can see here, the engines look a lot different in Juno because they include not just the nozzle on the back, but the actual engine. <laughs> because in reality, a turbofan engine like for uh, fighter jets, it has a lot of parts. It has the air intake, it has the, I think, compressor. Uh, don't quote me on that, but yeah, they're and the heating stuff up. Basically, it sucks air in, heats it up, and spits it out on the back. And therefore, you need fuel. And I'm pretty sure I messed the description. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to do here is trying to fit this into the. Uh, into the tank. Well, it's not really a tank. So far, it's just a cylinder because you have to add the fuel type later on. So I fit the air intake on top and I fit the engine. Now it's time to fit the wings in. Those are procedural and that's really nice uh, how the procedural wings work in Juno. I, I dare say it's better than in Kerbal Space Program 2. Even though the procedural wings there were great in general, this is a lot better. It's a lot more intuitive and you just drag and drop, uh, drag and drag them around and uh, modify them. That was a nice experience doing so. All right, so we have half a plane. So what do we do next? First off, I tried to add some uh, control surfaces to that winglet, that those winglets uh, on top, uh, up front actually. And after I did that, here is how symmetry works in Juno, or at least how I discovered that symmetry works. You build one half of the thing and then you just press the mirror button and then it mirrors it to the other side. Uh, unfortunate thing is, once you change something on one side, you have to do that again and again and again. Well, again is kind of my catchphrase, so yeah, I should be used to that. I also found out how to modify control surfaces. Yeah, just click on them specifically and then you can increase them and move them and yeah, again, really intuitive once you know what to do, but it wasn't obvious for me that you could click on the control surface. Then again, click on everything you find and yeah, seemingly uh, seeing, by the way, this is the eye icon and with the eye icon you can also add the center of mass and center of lift indicators. And what you saw here was my attempt at adding the landing gear. And at first I thought, well, the one is one of them is too small and the other one is too large. And then I was quite annoyed because there isn't a, a option in between until I remembered this is not Kerbal Space Program. This is Juno New Origins. And here you can tweak everything. And so I tweaked just size of the wheels until I thought it would fit. And then again, the wheel up front didn't fit, but then I tweaked that again. And look how nice this aligns to the uh, imaginary or the virtual floor. But this way you can really align your landing gear onto the surface you want to have it on. And that's a great trick. Okay, let's try this out. <laughs> and immediately throttling up, engage just apparently the wheels which tried to, to run forward until I finally uh, remembered to hit the stage button and <laughs> the engines took off. And as you can see here I had a bit of trouble controlling this and I was not sure why and how. Well I was able to fly it, albeit weirdly, well, until I was already high up in the atmosphere and I realized after activating the nav ball, which by default is not activated in Juno, maybe that can be set up somewhere, 
but I really would like that navel to be always visible. And then I found out uh, that orientation is not really how things should be. So apparently it kind of appears to control um, things from up top of the cockpit and not from the front. So the plane is thinks it's pointing upwards. And that's why also a roll and yaw controls were kind of mixed up. Uh, yeah, you can see it here really great that when the plane is level, the nav ball looks upwards. Yeah, still looks great, I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> but still, this was annoying as heck to fly. It was not really great to control. So there is only one thing to do again. Yes, we did it again. And if you notice that black ring on top, that's kind of a control pod and this is now oriented on to the front and yes you can see the nav ball is now in the perfect orientation on the westward runway pointing west all right the engines have afterburners but those uh, aren't activated by an action group or something like in case b uh, they are activated depending how high your throttle value is and yeah this is this was nice to fly and there's also a little something with the canopy i wanted to try out because that cockpit can be assigned to an action group and when you do that well you'll see what happens in about a few seconds i just pressed the action group right about here and <laughs> well again yeah, we don't want to ride with the top down <laughs> with a fighter jet. <laughs> so, yeah, I decided to keep that attached. <laughs> if, you, if you hit that uh, button on the you know, while the plane is uh, standing, is stationary, then of course it will just open up and it will close and it will not fly away. This is not an ejection seat, it's really just a canopy opening and closing. It's a nice detail and it's also funny that <laughs> it gets blown away. When you when you turn your plane into a convertible at Mach 2. Okay. So well, let's try out the old Top Gun trick. Can we buzz the tower? <laughs> yeah, of course we can. I mean, yeah, we also buzz the hangars, if we're being honest. Maybe there's a way to, to build this where I don't uh, use two tubes at the bottom, but like one part and then add two engines to it i need to experiment this is really the first time i really built this uh, plane in uh i almost said simple rockets too <laughs> in june on new origins and maybe i can try doing a moon rover next time or a sort of mars mission what do, would you like to see let me know in the comments down below if juno interests you and if comparisons to ksp interests you and what kind of mission you would like to see from me. I have no idea about this solar system um, and what to expect here, so it's going to be interesting to explore that together. All right, now that we had our fun, let's try landing this thing. And here we discover that, <laughs> that Juno has kind of the anti-Kerbal landing gear. <laughs> Remember how in KSP the landing gear kind of jumps around all the time and is really bouncy and hard to stick to the floor. This is the complete opposite. <laughs> but yeah, maybe they will change that in the future to make it more realistic because yeah, I mean, both are unrealistic. KSP's landing gear is unrealistic and this even more so if we're being honest. And while we're up here and waiting for getting down to the surface, I want to do a big shout out to all my channel members and Patreon supporters who have been so generous with providing me with additional support over all those years and months and weeks. And if you sign up for a higher tier, your name will show up here on the right side of your screen like these wonderful people just did right now. And if you haven't, please subscribe to this channel to see more comparison videos between KSB and Juno and maybe some other game in the future, because there's still a lot to do. And how do I get that plane to explode? 
Well, landing quickly isn't gonna do it, so... Ah, finally! If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.